Welcome. Some of you asked me in the reglazing video I did some time ago, where I was uh, reglazing these uh, facet bolts, among other things, how do you make them? So today we're gonna talk about, and I will show you how exactly I make these facet cut bolts. Um, I really, really like textures in general, but these uh, facet bolts are nice because the glaze, as you can see, breaks so nice over the edges. So you get these dark areas and light areas, and it just works really well. One of the big challenges with facet balls is that they tend to get really heavy. This is one of the first ones I ever did, and then I really, really like how the glaze turned out. It's very beautiful, and it's very heavy. <laughs> it's useful, you know, no doubt about that. But these ones, for example, they are almost twice the size, and they are half the weight. And I do like my bowls, because you pass them around on a table and stuff, I don't want them to be too heavy. This is stoneware. The problem is that if you look at um, if you look at the bowl here, I cut I cut the edges. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but when you have texture, if you want some deep textures, some of it is going to be thick because there's a limit to how thin you can cut the thin areas. And the deeper you want the texture, the more clay you're going to have on the thick areas. So by definition, a textured bowl is going to be more heavy than one that have no textures. Or at least it can be. Because with no textures, you can trim it down or throw it very thin. With the textures, you need more clay at certain places. I mean, that's the nature of texture. So the challenge is to make it thin enough so that it's still light and you still have heavy textures. And as I said, I think this one is, ah, not half the size, but considerably smaller than this one. And this is maybe two, two and a half times the weight of this one. This one feels light. It's a nice bowl. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can do that, how you can throw it, and how you can uh, cut the textures and still survive. Because if you make it too thin, when you cut the textures, you will cut through. And I promise you, sooner or later, you're going to do that. I've done that. And it's the only way that you can find out how thick it needs to be, how deep you can cut, try. Uh, you're going to fail, just like everybody else who tried things. But I'll show you a few tips to how you're less likely to fail. So let's go to the wheel. So first step, as always, is to pick the right clay. Although you can, of course, use any kind of clay, I highly recommend that you uh, use a clay with not too much grog, at least not too coarse grog, because otherwise you won't get so sharp edges in your facets. Um, so, or the fluted cuts, whatever you do. I'm using this uh, stoneware from Jolson Schneider. It's got 25% grog, but it's rather fine. So, as you can see, it's, uh, yeah, well, maybe you can't see it, but it doesn't feel groggy. I got about one and a half kilo, what is that? two pound, three pound, something like that. So it's not going to be a super big bowl. You are going to use more clay than you would for a normal thin bowl, which is talked about, um, because we need thicker um, uh, sides so we can, we can cut out. Um, so let's uh, start throwing this. I want a bowl that have a nice round uh, inside, but have a, a a straight wall to do the cut. It's much easier to do the cutting if you have a straight wall. So it's going to be a straight wall and then it's going to bend in uh, for the foot. You could also make it a round wall, but it's much more difficult to make a nice cut. And I like the design, round button and then a straight wall. So that's what we're aiming for. So let's throw this.
the trick and the challenge <laughs> with this is to make the wall thick enough so you have something to carve out, but not so thick that your pot will be too heavy. And it's, it's of course, like most other things, a matter of experience. Um, and of course, a matter of, um, of what tool you will use, how deep the cut will be. I'm going to leave a rather a thick uh, base for this because I want to I wanna trim uh, a foot for this. But you can choose whatever you want to do. Also, it's important that this part of the wall where you're going to cut out um, the facets uh, or the flutes um, have an even thickness because otherwise you may cut through some places or leave too much clay at other places. Just going to use a rim to, um, to make sure that my inside is uh, nice and smooth. slip. So now that my inside looks the way that I want this bowl to be, I will just um, perfect the, the side here. So I'm going to just make the separation between the rounded um, lower part and the more straight um, upper part, more um, precise. So now see we have a straight wall here and it's cutting here I have a, uh, and goes in. Um, and then I also want to um, make sure that the top here is completely flat because that's going to make my, my um, cutting more distinct, more, more easier to do. And then I just want to take out a little bit of clay in there. And make sure that there's no excess water inside. So, now we have the basic shape. Now needs to dry. You could theoretically do the carving now, but I like to do it when it's like soft leather hard. So not too um, hard, but soft enough to uh, cut it, but hard enough um, not to make it too sticky when we do it. So I'm gonna put this aside and uh, I'll do another one. So now we have the basic shape of the bowl, nice round continuous shape inside. Now I just need to um, make sure that the, we have vertical sides here, <clears throat> so straight sides uh, in the upper part for the carving. And then I want to have like a cut down to the sides, so there's a, a distinct separation between the vertical sides, um, straight up and down, and have to be very precise in the size. And then um, the lower part, which I will eventually trim, um, because I want a sharp separation between the, the, the carving and, um, and the lower part of my pot. So I'm not going to be focusing so much on that, because I know I have to um, to do some trimming on that anyway. But I will spend a little bit of time to make sure that the wall is even in thickness and um, that it's straight up and down. I mean, even with a curved side, you can still do carving, but it's just so much easier. So um, 
for the purpose of this demonstration. I'm going to do it with straight walls. And, and also I like that design, so um, it's not just because it's easier. It may have started that way, but now I kind of grew to, um, to like that design. And I'm going to flatten the top too, to make sure that it's, um, it will leave more uh, distinct um, marks when we, uh, when we do the, um, the carving. So I, I like that. Well, make sure that the I generally like um, to finish the inside of my bowl, but again, you know, I'm not religious about it. So if you do need to do some trimming on the inside, please be my guest. Go ahead. I often do that, even though many potters will tell you never to trim the inside of a bowl. You know what? I don't really care much for these. You have to do. You can't do kind of statements because it's sort of stupid. Um, you can do anything you want. But um, it does make sense from a production point of view to try and finish the inside as much as you can. But if it dries up and there's um, anything you don't like about the inside, trim it. I do that all the time. So I think that looks nice. So now we're just going to have to let it dry because we want it to be Sort of soft leather hard, not too um, not too hard because that's going to make it difficult to trim. But on the other hand, not too soft um, because then everything is going to stick uh, together. So it's probably going to be I don't know in the evening or tomorrow morning or something should be ready. So um, see you there. Now it's ready to do the carving. It is uh, sort of leather hard. It's easy to cut without being too sticky, but it's not too hard for me to actually cut through. You could do some trimming now before you do the carving. Uh, I usually don't do too much trimming, but this is actually a good example of a part where I would like to do it because even though I was very careful, if you see, there's a little bit of uh, an indent here or some, yeah, I didn't do my, my job well enough. <laughs> So, in this case, I just want to make sure that this surface is um, completely smooth. So, and also the top. So, now it's good. And also, I often do that with, um, with bowls, is that I, I do some trimming here because when you turn it around to trim the foot, it's really difficult to judge how thick it is. And as I spoke about in the beginning, the challenge with these parts is that they um, tend to be too heavy because of the thick walls. So I want to have this lower part as thin as possible. And to do that, it's easier to do when it's um, in top side up because I can, I, can, I can feel the thickness. When you turn it around, you're kind of like trimming in blind, <laughs> and sometimes you go through. So I'm just going to take, I'm not going to try and make it perfect or beautiful here. I'm just trying to take out some of the clay, so I get a feeling for, um, for how much I can actually take out. So yeah. I think that's good for now. I do want to leave a little bit. Because after I do the carving, I want to trim um, the end of it so that it looks nice. I'll get back to that. So I think we're ready for the carving of this one. Just going to cut it loose. Yeah, that looks good. So let's move to the table. Now we're ready to do the carving, or the fluting, if you like. Um, I'm using this tool from um, Mud Tools. I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, Mud Tools. Uh, it's specifically made for fluting. You can also buy other tools like that, or you can make your own. Um, but I like this because it's got this um, way that uh, it's very easy to control how deep I go. Uh, the higher I put it, the deeper I go, 
and the lower, the more uh, superficial or, or thin I can cut. In this case, I have really thick walls. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have made them that big, thick, but um, I did. So I can actually cut out a lot. So I measure, you know, say, okay, this is the angle. So I'm going to keep that angle all the way around to keep even sized um, fluting. And uh, I'm going to keep my hand on the back side just to support a little bit and uh, also give me a feel of how deep I'm going. But the thickness of the wall is very even, so that makes it easier. Now, when I do the cutting, you have to do it like in one go. Otherwise, it gets wrinkled and not so nice. And remember, we're not doing anything more with this except maybe trimming the bottom. And so one go. So let's do the first one. You need to be outside the table so you can continue all the way down. And I think we're going to go deep like this. So something like that. And you see the ending here is not perfect. And there's some scraps of clay. Leave it. Um, it's too wet now to, um, to do anything about it. And now you need to decide whether you want to have a big um, space between them or very close. I like to have them very close. I think that looks good. So that's it. Don't touch it. It's very, very tempting to kind of clean it up now, but it looks much better if you wait until it's completely dry. So now we're just going to go all the way around. Now when you get to the end, you have to decide whether you want to make one big or two smaller. Um, I think I'm just going to make one big here. So, now it's good. And this is one of the things I love about these. Look how the profile looks. Uh, it's so nice. Now, I just need to remove the top. Uh, if there's any left here because I'm not going to move, I'm not going to try and smudge anything else, but we need to turn it around to do the trimming. Um, so we need to put it upside down and I don't want to push in any of these leftovers into the, into the clay. And now it's actually super thin, <laughs> only a couple of millimeters where I carved it out. So this is perfect. It's uh, still a little bit heavy, but we're going to cut out some more at the bottom. Let's go to the wheel again. So now I have um, put it on the wheel and secured it with a couple of lumps of clay because I'm not going to trim this. So the first thing I did was just to make sure that it's, um, it's even and flat. Next thing I will mark where I want the foot to go and in this case it's just a little bit in like this. And then I have a perfect circle here. So even if the part is not completely aligned, I have this circle. So instead of, of moving in, which is very common, I will try and, and um, take it from the top and down because I want to I keep this perfect circle. So now you see, even if the part, it was actually, but even if the part was not completely um, centered, um, you end up with a perfect circle, which is important because I also want to do a foot rim. So now you see this, they don't all end at the same place, which is, you know, okay, but I like it to be clean cut. So um, now I'm going to uh, trim down here where the fluting ends. See, now it looks much better. And again, there's some um, scraps of clay here. Don't touch it now, because you will just smudge it into it. When it dries, they're very easy to just peel off. 
And now I want to make a prepare the foot. And see, I'm taking off quite a lot, so that's also going to help help with the weight. I was taking inside, and as I said, I needed some strength here to do this side, so now I can take off quite a lot of it. So, it's beginning to look good, and now we can start working on the, the foot rim. I always start out by marking um, the width. I know some potters go the other way, but I found that this works really well for me to make it completely even and round, and I want that. And then when I start removing clay, I always use just like a corner, because I don't want to put too much uh, pressure on it. And it's important to keep it very steady and not um, not let the clay control um, the death. You want to carve into it, not like just bump away, <laughs> so to speak. I also like to keep a small curve, so it kind of follows uh, the outside curve in the in the foot. And when you do the final uh, um, polishing here or burnishing, be careful not to push too much because. I have made it very thin now, and um, that's good, but it also means that it's very fragile and I can easily push through, <laughs> which of course I don't want to. So I also try and smooth it. It's it's nice with uh, both stoneware and porcelain to, to make the edges just a little bit round, because if you make them too sharp, uh, they can very easily chip off if you bump into something. If, if they just round it just slightly, um, it makes it more um, strong. So, the last thing I need to do is add my Maker's Mark. And um, as I said a lot of times, I'm using these ones uh, that I had made in Ukraine. Uh, very sturdy, very good. Very deep, very thin, made in stainless steel. The best ones I ever had. And I bought them uh, from, a, from a woman in, uh, in Ukraine, not only to support local business, which I think is a, is a great thing. It's good to send money to Ukraine, but it's also good to support their business. They need to you know, have business running. Uh, but also because it's a very, very good quality. I couldn't find it anywhere else. And she had a very good price on it. So I'm just going to stamp the foot ring because that's. The one part I'm sure of is not going to get um, glazed. I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't bump or anything. So, now I'll just remove these lumps of clay. And now we have the ball. And it is now really, really light. Surprisingly light, considering it is a, a um, trimmed or a, a textured uh, uh, pot. And it will, of course, get a little bit lighter once we get all the water out of it. So now I will um, leave it to dry. And then when it's completely dried, I'll remove the little crumbles. Um, so be careful when you touch it. Don't press in any of that. Just make it more difficult to clean up. So now we're ready to do the other one. And uh, I think I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the first one, just uh, sharpening the, the edge here to make sure that it's perfect for the carving. Also a little bit on the top. It just looks better. So. 
so. And also, <clears throat> I'm going to do um, the foot a little bit, trim that. So, yeah, I can do a bit more when I turn it around, but now at least I got some of it. Cut it loose. And now we go to the table. So now we are ready with the second one. And uh, again, I'm using uh, my mud tools, a uh, fluting tool. This one is a little bit thinner, not too much, but still uh, I'm keeping my hand on the inside to make sure that uh, I don't go through. <laughs> This one is a little more dry. I should have done it a couple of hours ago, but it works. I can feel it <laughs> on the inside, uh, pushing out a little bit when I, when I carve it, uh, which is fine because that just shows me that it is super thin now, which is what I want. Um, just to make sure it doesn't get too heavy. This one doesn't have completely straight walls, so it's a little more difficult to carve it, but it can look really good. So um, just a question of getting the hand of it. See that one didn't cut. I think that's going well. I haven't broken anything yet. <laughs> that's a good sign. So now we're getting close to where we have to decide if we can have two or three. I think two will work well here. The way I make them, they will never be completely even. But I mean, again, I want it to look like it's made by hand. And uh, look at the, the profile here. I really, really love that. So now we can go back to the wheel and trim the foot. So now it's on the wheel and it's uh, centered. So again, the first thing I will do is just make sure that it's uh, leveled here. Unlike the last time, I'm not going to go too much in here because the deeper you go in here, the more you cut here, the more flat it's going to be. So by keeping it out here, it will be a more uh, steam uh, curve. And see again when I cut this, the ending of the um, of the fluting will be much nicer. And now, if you tap it, you can also listen to the sound of it to judge how thick it is. And I think we can take a little bit more. The thinner it gets, the less pressure you can make. So you shouldn't press. You should keep it in whatever distance it is, so you kind of shave it off instead of like digging into it. So, yeah. Now we're ready to do the foot. By the end of doing the, the foot, I like this white one. I can't put so much pressure because then I'm going to push it through, but it's nice to even out um, the surface. And again, just rounding off the edges so they don't chip as easy. And 
like it's smoothing it. So, I just need to add my Maker's Mark. And that's it. And this one also feels nice and light. So, putting it to dry. Now the pots have dried. They're now bone dry. And um, as we talk about, don't remove um, any of the little uh, pieces of clay that is left after you um, flute them. Now it's the time to do it. You can see here on some of them, uh, there's a little bit uh, on some places. Not actually that much because most of it fell off when I uh, trimmed them. But if there's anything left, you can now just remove them. I usually just use a nail because they're gonna crumble off. <laughs> Very easy to remove. Yeah, here you can see there's one. A little bit here. You can easily just remove it with a finger because those little pieces are now dry. And uh, so it's very easy to remove them. And I recommend that you do it now when it's, um, when it's on this uh, bone dry stage. You could also remove them, grind them off um, after you bist fry it, but it's just so much easier to do it now. The only thing, as you probably know, at this stage where it's bone dry and not bisque fried, it's very, very fragile. So when, you, when you're dealing with this, be very careful. It's better to remove too little than to move too much. Um, and just the loose part here is actually very little that's left on this one. I mean, you can always grind it when it's uh, basic fire. It's just easier to, um, to do it now, I think. But be careful. So I think this one looks nice now. It's trimmed, and um, because of the trimming inside too, it is very light. As I said, this clay is in itself not very beautiful. When we bisque fry it, it's become this dull, not really white, it's not gray. Not, yeah, I don't like the color of the clay, but the glazes look really good on it. And um, so for this part, I want to glaze it, of course, on the inside, and I want to glaze all the fluted sides, but I don't want to glaze it uh, at the bottom. So that's going to be raw clay, unless we do something. I don't like the color. So there are two ways that uh, you can deal with that. Oh, at least two ways that I deal with it. <laughs> you probably can find something else. Um, for this one, I added some uh, black slip. It looks a little bit blue now, but it will it will turn more blackish, um, a dark blue. Um, so that's going to give me a different um, color, except for in, instead of just the raw clay. That's one solution. Another solution that I will apply on this one is to use a wash. I'll probably use a red iron oxide wash or a combination of different washes to make it more dark. Um, I've, it depends a little bit on what glaze I will end up with. Um, so a few um, tips for you when doing these uh, fluted bowls. I like to do as I did to make it a little bit thicker than what I actually need. Because if you try to make it very thin and you flute, there's a very big risk that you're going to cut through. And then it's destroyed and throw it out. So I like to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker than, than what I end up using. And then I trim the inside down to um, the thickness that it can take. That way, I end up with bowls that is super light, despite the fact that it is a textured bowl. So as we talked about the the... The, the, the raised part of it will be thick because, I mean, <laughs> the deeper you want the texture, the thicker it's going to be on those raised parts. And you can only go, you know, that thin. This is only, I would say, maybe two millimeters thick on, 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 on the, the lower parts of, um, of, the, of the fluting. So all in all, it feels light. And, and that's, you know, what I like for a bowl like this. So I will bisque fry them now, and uh, in another video I will get back to you on how I um, glaze um, fluted uh, bowls like this, but also some of the other um, textured bowls that I am working on. 
So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this. And if you did, please subscribe, like, share, press that little bell, because then you will be notified about uh, new and upcoming videos. And as always, there will be a new video every Sunday. It's around five o'clock uh, European time. So that's in the morning in the US. Um, but of course, you can watch it anytime you want. Every Sunday, come back. I hope to see you soon again. Thank you.